Hey, Ryan here with FBF, Florida Boy Finance. How many times have you been at the end of the month and wondered where all your money went? Maybe you got a bonus at work and you thought you were going to put $1,000 in savings that month, only to have to transfer money from savings to pay your bills. Or maybe you had some big paychecks with lots of overtime, only to realize you already spent the money before you made it. Have you been there? We all have. It's so easy today to overspend. And half the time, you forget what you spent all your money on. With so much advertising and pressure placed on people to have the newest and best, it's easy to give in. After all, spending money you don't have, to buy things you don't need, to impress people you don't like, only leads to financial trouble. The big question is how to avoid doing all of that. How do you stop spending excessively and save extra money every month? Well, you were in luck. That is what I love doing. Spending less and saving more. After all, the motto of my channel is to live below your means, save outrageously, and give generously. Do you want to know how to save more money each month? Look at ways to cut spending and increase your rainy day fund in your savings account? This video will show you exactly how to do just that. But before we get going, please follow the links in the description below to follow me on Instagram, Florida Boy Finance, and like my Facebook page, also called Florida Boy Finance, for behind the scenes photos, articles, and sneak peeks at my newest videos. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you can be notified every time a new video posts. Several months ago, I did a video on 14 irresponsible ways to waste a ton of money. Check it out if you haven't seen it already. That video has done well for my small channel. So I thought I'd do a follow-up one. So instead of 14 ways to waste money, here are 14 ways to save a lot of money. $100,000 at age 25. So I get asked a lot, where do I start? I uh, want to start saving money, but I also have student debt, but I also think I need to be saving for retirement, but also I think I want to buy a house someday. Like, what do I do? I do agree. I believe most millennials are more financially savvy at their age than their parents were at that same age. They have lots of questions, but in most cases, don't know where to start. Let's start at the beginning with the basics. You don't know where you're overspending if you don't track your spending. The very first thing you need to do is, number one, set up an expense tracking spreadsheet or really anything that you use to track your expenses. Some people like to use an Excel spreadsheet. That's what I use. If you're a big fan of apps, there are many apps available. Just go to the app store on your device and search for expense tracking. You will find a ton of available apps. Look through them and find the one that works best for you and your situation. Really, expense tracking is as basic as subtracting your total monthly expenses from your total monthly income. The best way is to categorize each expense area. That way you see if you are overspending in one area or another. A quick look will show that you might be consistently spending way too much in the entertainment or eating out area. That way you can find creative ways to save money in those areas. If you aren't sure exactly how to set up a spreadsheet or track your expenses, I did a video a while back on that same topic. It's called the perfect free budget. Check it out. I have been using this same system since 2014 and it has worked very well for me. If you don't do any of these other things, the single best way to save money is to track your expenses and cut the areas where you are overspending. Number two is to set financial goals. Doing this builds financial discipline. Your goals could be to build a six month emergency fund meaning to have six months of your net pay and savings. That way, if anything bad happened financially to you, you would have six months of money saved up to pay your bills. Another financial goal would be to put, let's say $300 every month into an IRA or other retirement savings plan. Or maybe you wanna save up for a down payment on a home. Whatever you're planning on achieving, set them out as your goals and work towards them. Setting short-term goals like investing in an IRA every month or building a six month emergency fund is great and it's something you should do. But don't just set short-term goals. Also set long-term goals as well. Long-term goals might be something like paying off your home in 10 years, owning three rental properties in five years, or increasing your net worth to a million dollars in 10 years. All these are great goals. Make goals that work best for you, your family, and your financial situation. 
Also, don't forget to make your goals challenging, but also achievable. If they're too challenging, you might quit. But if they're easily achievable, you might get lazy financially and not achieve to your ability level. Setting goals and working towards achieving them really helps you to stick with your expense tracking and avoid excessive spending. Number three is to quit unhealthy habits. Things like chewing tobacco, smoking, excessive alcohol use, or even things like drinking a lot of soda, eating junk food, or playing the lottery can all cause unnecessary strain in your finances. Not only is drinking excessive soda or alcohol, smoking, chewing tobacco, and junk food bad for your health, but it's also expensive to purchase. Quitting these bad habits can improve your health and your quality of life, and it will help you save extra money every month. It's a win-win. Number four, pack your lunch. This is a simple thing that can save a lot of money every month. It's also something that I do the vast majority of the time when I go to work. Imagine working five days a week and spending $10 per day on lunch. That's $50 a week, $200 a month, or $2,600 per year just for lunches. That's a lot of money being wasted. If you don't believe me, go back to step number one. Track your expenses. See how much money you're spending eating out. You will probably be shocked how much money you're wasting. Speaking of wasting money eating out, number five, share meals at restaurants or get smaller portions. If you are a dating, engaged, or married couple, sharing meals can be a huge money saver. Plus, it teaches you to work together and maybe make some small sacrifices for each other. One of my wife's and my favorite things to do when eating out is to get an appetizer and split a main entree. That way we get to try different things and even save money doing it. You see, an appetizer is usually much cheaper than an entree. And usually after we have already eaten an appetizer, half the entree usually fills us up. Most restaurants usually offer very large portions. So eating the whole thing probably isn't the best for you anyway. If you're a single person, get smaller portions. They're usually less expensive. And again, most of us don't need all that food. And if you do get the larger portion, only eat half of it and save the rest of it for lunch at work the next day. That way you're getting two meals for the price of one. I know this seems like it won't make that big of a difference, but trust me, it all adds up. Just think, if this could save you $25 per week, that's $100 per month or $1,300 per year. Sharing meals, eating smaller portions, and packing your lunch doesn't just save you money, but it also has great health benefits. Do it. You won't regret it. Number six cancel unused subscription services. According to Yahoo Finance, people are wasting around $350 per year in unused subscription services. That's $30 per month that they're literally throwing down the drain. Cancel the subscription services that you don't use. Don't waste money that way. Number seven, cancel cable TV or use an online cable streaming service. Getting rid of traditional cable and going with an online cable provider can save you a lot of money. I did a video a while back called I Ditch Cable. Go ahead and check it out. Using an online streaming service like YouTube TV, Friendly TV, Fubo, Sling, Hulu TV, and Philo, just to name a few, are very good providers and will be much cheaper than paying for a traditional cable service. Another great option is Peacock TV, and they have a free option. It gives you free access to thousands of hours of TV shows and movies. My wife and I have been cable free for over a year and I've saved over a thousand dollars as a result. Not only have we saved money by going this route, but we also have faster internet and a better channel lineup. We're never going back. I encourage you to do the same. Number eight is to prepare to grocery shop. Make a meal plan, lay out the ingredients that you will need for those plans, plan the days you will cook those meals and stick to it. Look through the grocery store sale ads, plan your meals around what is on sale. Planning your meals around sale ads and only buying what you need for those meals will drastically reduce your grocery bill and in turn will reduce your food waste as well. Don't go overboard buying snacks, sodas, and random things that look good to you while shopping. Meal planning will take some extra work on your part, but be sure that it's worth it. Number nine, make up your mind to never impulse buy again. Impulse buying is the enemy of financial discipline. Don't do it, ever. Instead, make a decision that anything you decide that you want, you will not buy for a certain amount of time. For some people, it might be to think about it for just a few days. For others, it might mean a few weeks or even a month or so. Impulse buying is a poor financial decision that can lead to a lifestyle of poor financial decision making. The major reason being lacking any financial discipline. 
impulse buying trains your mind that if you want something, you buy it. There is no reasoning through it or thinking how you will use it or even if you will use it. Another reason impulse buying is bad is that you don't find the best deal. You just buy it the first time you see it. The best way to work through situations like this is to take a step back and think about the purchase and what all you will use it for. Then once you decide that you really need it or you really want it, take some time to price shop and find the place and time that will give you the best price and best deal. Number 10 is to refinance your mortgage. If you purchased your home more than five to 10 years ago, you can probably save a lot of money refinancing your mortgage. 10 years ago, the average interest rate on a 30 year fixed mortgage was 4.7%. Right now, the average 30 year fixed mortgage rate is around 3.5%. That would save you over one percentage point in interest, which is really a huge deal. For example, if you had a $200,000 mortgage at 4.7%, your monthly payment would be $1,037. But if you had the exact same mortgage at a 3.5% interest rate, your monthly payment would be $898. That's a savings of $139 a month. Now follow me on this. If you took that extra savings from your refinance and paid it back on your mortgage every month, what I mean by that is you would now be paying $1,037 per month on the new mortgage with the interest rate of 3.5%. That would allow you to pay off your home a little over six years earlier and save you almost $29,000 in interest. You're still paying your same payment, but now with the lower interest rate. Number 11 is to track your electric bill. This can be a huge area of waste, not just of money, but of energy as well. Don't overcool or overwarm your house. If you have a fireplace, use it. It's much cheaper than paying that high heating bill. If you are like us and need to water your yard, make sure you don't water for too long. Set your watering zones appropriately and adjust them for the changing of the seasons. Another way to help out with insane electric bills is by getting a smart thermostat and taking advantage of the presets. During the summer when you aren't home, you can preset your thermostat to 80 degrees. And in the evening, you can preset it to 76 degrees. That way your home is much more efficient and you don't waste energy running that air condition when you aren't even home. Plus your electric bill will go down as well. Number 12, change your cell phone provider. The big providers like Verizon and AT&T are usually the most expensive. Find some of these smaller carriers and research how well they perform in your area. You will likely save a ton of money by doing so. Also, if you are a retired or current member of the military, law enforcement, EMS, or a teacher, call your carrier and ask if they offer a discount. I work at EMS and I called AT&T, my current carrier, and they gave me a 20% discount on my cell service since I work in emergency medical services. Also, check with your employer. Some cell phone providers will offer you a discount if they have a contract with your employer. Number 13, always, always, always plan out your major purchases. We all have these. They happen from time to time. Never ever make a major purchase without first planning it out and shopping around. Even if your AC goes out in the middle of the Florida summer, find the best price. There are companies out there that will try and take advantage of you by talking you into a quick sale. Don't do it. Get the quote in writing, find out how long the quote is good for, and tell them you will get back with them. The last, and certainly not least, and probably the most surprising for all of you will be. Number 14. Volunteer. Make a difference. It gets real hard to focus on your wants and your next biggest purchase if you're serving other people. Serving other people can help you become more thankful and put life in a better perspective. It's hard to want more things and be more wasteful when you're serving other people. Giving back is a huge part of this channel. It's the last line in the channel's motto, to live below your means, save outrageously, and give generously. Giving generously does not mean to just give of your money. It can also mean to give of your time. Serving your local church, volunteer at your local boys and girls club, help tutor some underprivileged kids after school, or volunteer at a local food bank. Find an area of your community where there is a need and serve there. Serving others breeds discipline and a desire to put other people's needs in front of your own needs at times. Filling up your time working with others isn't just good for the people you're helping, it's also good for you too. It will help you put your life in perspective and realize that life isn't all about money and finances. That's something I have to learn at times as well. If you're still watching this video, that means you liked it. So do me a favor and smash that like button below and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Florida Boy Finance, and like my Facebook page, 
also called Florida Boy Finance, for behind the scenes photos, articles, and sneak peeks at my newest videos. Until next time, always remember to live below your means, save outrageously, and give generously.